Hello, welcome to this video. Today I am going to be talking about all the books that I read in January. I'm a little bit late, but I'm here. We're doing it. I started um, keeping a reading journal, so I've been like writing down my thoughts after I finish each book, and hopefully that will help me um, be better at talking about the books and better at remembering them. Although, I did just read what I wrote about the first one that I'm going to talk about. It's a good thing that I wrote things down because I, I don't really fully remember everything that I wrote, but honestly, let's just get into it. I read six books this month. This is not in the order that I read them, and it's not in any specific order, except that the first book that I read was the worst one, so that's the one I'm going to talk about last because it does not deserve to be the first one to talk about. So. The first book that I'm going to tell you about is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Um, I've heard a lot of people, well, I say that. Almost all of the booktubers that I watch have talked about this book at one point or another. And a lot of them really, really liked it. And then there were a few that were like, I did not like this book for these reasons. And the reasons seemed very valid to me. So I had this book on hold for a long time at the library. But then I got it and I was like, I waited for so long, I'm just gonna read it, but like maybe I'll hate it and that's fine. I didn't hate it. I read it all in one afternoon. Not really so much because I just couldn't put it down, but more so because it was a Sunday afternoon and I had the time. And so I, I just read it. I will also say this. The people that I've heard talk about it, when they say what the story is about, it's just like the book has so much more than what any of them said. Like there's just so much more to it. And maybe they didn't say more because it was spoilers, but like basically it's about this lady named Emily Wilde, obviously. And she is going to this country, this place to um, look for these certain specific fairies because she's making an encyclopedia, um, just documenting like what different kinds of fairies do how they act with the stories about them what yeah i don't know what else and so she's going to this remote place to find these remote fairies and then this guy shows up and he's like technically her co-worker and she's like ugh, he's the worst because he always just like hires other people to do his job for him and then he takes the credit but the thing that no one mentions okay is that Emily Wilde is suspicious of this guy from pretty much the start that he may not really be who he says he is and then like throughout the story we learn that she's right sorry if that's a spoiler I'm not that sorry um we learn that she's right and then she's like surprised by it and I'm like that does not make sense because you were suspicious from the very beginning so like now you're gonna act all surprised when you were right that was a little bit dumb to me. Um, <laughs> she does at one point um, see the fairies for sure and, and talk to some of them and maybe some other stuff happens. Who knows? You'll have to read the book. Um, so yeah, what were my thoughts overall? I don't know if that was a good synopsis or not. It is what it is. It's kind of what I remember. I like the main character and I liked the importance of stories. Like she collected people's stories and wrote them all down and like when things happened with the fairies and with magic almost every single time she was able to find a solution or to fix something or to figure out how to communicate with the fairies because she remembered the stories that people had told her and so like every story was important because they told her something about the fairies and um i really like that and it reminded me a lot of cloud cuckoo land where like the story plays an important part in like throughout the book yeah, I guess I would just say I liked the book. Um, it wasn't as bad as those few people made me think it was, although I understand their criticism. I think that it wasn't, it was not the best book that I've ever read, but I liked it. It was kind of fun. Um, the, I do have the second one on hold right now at the library, but it's a pretty long wait, so we'll see if I even feel like reading it when it comes in. <laughs> the next book that I read was The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I think that's how you say his name. So The Remains of the Day is about this English butler who is, he's reaching 
he's getting older. He, um, his old, his old employer has passed away. He now has a new, there's a new American man that bought this guy's house, but this butler is still working there. He's working for him and he gets the opportunity to take a couple days vacation, which he's never really done before. And so the book is basically him talking about, ref is basically the butler reflecting on his life and reflecting on things that happened and how he feels about his life and also him going on this little road trip vacation thing. And yeah, just reflecting on the job that he's done, how he feels that he did and his old boss and what he thinks about him. And just like saying that it, when I think about like what actually happens in the book, it feels like it could be really boring, but it was not. It really was not. I really, really enjoyed this book. Like, and when I tell you, I, if you would tell me that Kazuo Ishiguro was an old English butler, I would believe you. I don't understand how he got so into the mindset of this butler. Like, it fully felt like this was a butler telling me about his life. And I'm not fully convinced that it wasn't. Like, I'm not convinced that he didn't find someone's diary and just, like, copy it out. Not actually, but, like, he did so good at, like, developing this character and, like, speaking as though he, as he would speak and saying what he would say and just, like, his mindset about everything. It's kind of crazy. So there's a lot of um, reading between the lines because he'll say things a certain way and from his viewpoint, and it kind of makes sense because he is trying to prove to himself that he did his job well and that he kept his dignity and that he like dignity is a really big thing for him and um and that he was like a proper butler and so he says these things and then but then he'll jot down the reactions of other people around him and you realize that he was not actually as he wasn't quite as composed as he thought he was. He wasn't quite as like unruffled as he thought he was, but it's very interesting. Yeah, so I guess you could say he was like an unreliable narrator a little bit. Like everything that he says is not 100% true or not exactly how it happened. Yeah, it was not, it was not a fast paced book at all. It was him reflecting over his life, but something about the writing, I just really, really enjoyed it. And like, it just, it hooked me. It really got me. I was like, I need to know what happened. I just wanted to keep reading even when it wasn't like action packed and like suspenseful, it, but it, it really got me. It was a very, I don't know the right word to describe this book, but I did really enjoy it and I wouldn't, I would recommend it. Next, I listened to the audiobook of Pride and Prejudice what can I say? What can I say? I feel like it has become kind of like a comfort read for me, except I was listening to it, but whatever. It's just one of my favorite stories of all time. And I really like the audiobook narrator and the one that I listened to. I think it's, I think it is the Dover Classics edition. I just love it. And like, I know exactly what's going to happen. And every time I'm just like, oh my gosh. Or I'm like, He's the worst. Um, you know, I, <laughs> what can I say? I love it. Next book on my list. I read a book called Daddy Long Legs by Jean Webster. And I borrowed this book from my friend Lisa. And it's definitely like a, I don't know if it's a middle grade book, but it's definitely a younger book. Um, I feel like if I would have read it when I was younger, I would have loved it. I would have eaten that up. Num, 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 num. It was so, it was so fun and so cute and just like, just like a fun little book. Okay. It's about this girl who grew up in an orphanage and she's about to turn 18, which usually would mean that she needs to be kicked out of the orphanage, but they're like, maybe she can work for them, whatever. But anyway, then one of the board members of the orphanage decides that he wants to sponsor her way through college. He's like, I will pay for everything. All I ask is that you don't know who I am and you write me letters to update me on how school is going. And so basically the book is all of her letters that she writes him 
throughout the four years that she is going to school. And yeah, it's just really fun and really sweet. It has some cute little illustrations. There were two things that really bothered me. <laughs> um, like if I think about it, if I don't think about it, it's great. I'm like, this was just such a fun little book, okay? When I really think about it, I'm like, yeah, I know this was written it a long time ago and times were different, but something still just bothered me. And I can't say what it was because it's actually a major spoiler, but we're just gonna put that to the side and say that this was a really fun book and I really enjoyed it. Second to last book that I read is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Let me give you a little summary. It is about this world. Yep, yep, it's a fantasy book, okay, yep. The ending was crazy. Let me just tell you, it was crazy. I, th that's all I can say. And it really like stuck with me. Like I kept thinking about it. I was like, why would you do that? Like, and how did he, the way that this man's mind works is like insane. Anyway, I did really enjoy that book and I will be continuing the series. Then the last book that I have to talk about that was actually the first book I read. It's just, it feels a little bit embarrassing, I'm not gonna lie, but I refuse to be embarrassed by it, but I am a little bit. Um, just because it's so dumb. And like, I don't like to be like, most of the time, most of the time, if I don't like a book, I just won't finish it. But this one I did. I don't know why. I just, to be fair, I did skim a lot of it. Um, let me just tell you what it was. It was called Rescuing Lord Inglewood. Yeah. Um, and it was on Kindle Unlimited. And it was a Regency romance. Um, and I thought I would like it because I love... Pride and Prejudice. I love Emma. I love Jane Eyre. This is not a classic, okay? And I didn't think it was. Like, let's not, let's get that straight. I did not think it was, but I like those vibes. And so I thought, probably I'll like these ones too. Um, and I think I knew that it was a clean romance. And that was like, I was like, I just want a little something sweet that is not going to be disgusting. You know what I mean? And so I was reading it and it's about basically it's about this girl who I don't remember her name but she is out walking one day her neighbor is putting up a giant statue and they're like lowering it into her lawn and she sees that one of the ropes is about to break it's crazy and then she sees this guy walking along and he doesn't see that the rope is about to break and the statue's got to fall on him and kill him and so she runs over and she pushes him out of the way and she saves his life and she lands on top of him in the street. Yikes. And of course, this is the 18, 1800s or something. And so that is like the most improper thing you can do. And so in order to save her reputation, this guy who ends up being Lord Inglewood is like, well, I guess I have to marry her so that people don't think she's a hoe. <sighs> yeah <laughs> um I just the writing was just really not great um and also I feel it, they were trying to the author was trying to be like it was supposed to be like a miscommunication thing so basically this girl she was like a, older already um and not married obviously but she was like living with her in-law, like her sister-in-law or something. I don't remember. But people kept on making decisions for her and about her life. And she was like, guys, I hate when people make choices for me about my life and don't consult me. And she said that so clearly to this man, to the Lord Inglewood, at least twice. She like literally said, I don't like when people make choices for me without asking me about what I think. And then he would just keep on making choices for her without asking her what she thinks. And he can get away with it because 1800s and women are trash. And then, and then 
they tried to pass it off as miscommunication and then and then he would be like I just don't understand why she's mad at me I'm just doing what's best for her like I just don't get it I don't get why she's upset and it's so stupid because she just told him so plainly how she felt and he just didn't listen um it's so dumb anyway I did keep reading it I did finish it they get married. I'm going to tell you because I this is fully spoilers, okay? I don't really care. Um, they do get married. He sends her to his house in the countryside. And he, like, gives her paint supplies so she can be her little artist girl. And I actually don't really remember what happens. There is another guy that, like, keeps trying to show up at his house and be like, Hey, girl, what's up? Your husband isn't at home, is he? But then nothing ever happens with that. Like, it's so dumb. Like, he just shows up and he's like, get off my property and never talk to my wife again. And I'm like, what was the reason that he was there? Like, he literally did nothing important. Oh my gosh. Oh, also her brother is away at war and then they think he dies and then they like, her brother was this guy's bestie. He, they think he dies. Um, they go through mourning together, um, RIP, but he's not actually dead. Okay. Then he shows up, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. He shows up and he goes to his bestie's house before he would even go to visit his sister. How rude is that? And then he sees his sister and he's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were here. And then they're like, oh, we're married. <laughs> and then they have to go through all that. And she's like jealous of, oh my gosh, I literally, it doesn't matter. I just thought it was so, I just thought it was dumb. I, there were so many things that didn't make sense and that didn't need to be there and that I didn't have a fun time. I skimmed a lot of it, but I was like, I have, I am here. Let's see. What, I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, I wouldn't recommend that book. I think there are probably people who like it. Um, I just wasn't one of them. So yeah, that's all the books that I read this month. <laughs> I feel like I'm a little bit stressed out from talking about the last one, but I'll be okay because I kept forgetting that I read it. Like I would go into my story graph and look at all the books I read and I was like, oh yeah, I read that book. Yikes. Anyway, I'll get over it. Don't worry about me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what was your favorite book that you read in January or if you've read any of these. What did you think? And I will see you next time. Bye.